morning, good afternoon everybody. My name is Marco Carminati and I'm a Global Direct Current Application Specialist. In this session, we will talk about the Electric Vehicle Charging Infrastructure, in short, EVCI. We are going to have some valuable contribution from DC experts and researchers. Since the electric vehicles are becoming more and more spread, it is important the development of an adequate charging infrastructure able to connect all the charges in parallel and to connect them to the AC utility. One of electric vehicle spreading driver is the recharging time. So the DC fast charger will become more and more common. As a consequence, EVCI will be often in direct current in order to reduce the power losses and to avoid the use of onboard EV converters. Furthermore, the so-called vehicle to grid function will become a way to support the utility. Such a function is the capability of the VCI to inject part of the battery stored energy into the grid during the charging phase. So, the VCI has to be able to manage the power flow, namely the current, in both directions, and the bidirectionality will become a very important system requirement. In this session, starting from the VCI architecture, we will talk about the ground connection and we'd like to analyze the short circuit and ground fault considering the several fault contribution and the converted behavior during those events. You know, direct current is usually less dangerous compared to uh, AC, but at the voltage level which is used normally in EVCI, we have still to consider the protection against electric shock. So, we will analyze it and last but not least, we'll provide also an overview on the ABB comprehensive portfolio in order to meet the several EVCI protection requirements. So, let me to introduce you to Diego Pareschi, who is the Global Product Manager for EV Chargers. Good morning, Diego. Can you explain us how the solution for EV charging have evolved over time? Thank you, Marco. This is a very interesting story. The first electric cars were developed during the 19th century. However, electric vehicles could not take over their gasoline counterpart due to their limited operating range. With the introduction of lithium-ion batteries, it became possible to store large amounts of power in a small and compact way. And in the early years 2000, the market saw the introduction of the first electric vehicles that could uh, travel longer distances. The main obstacle for a wide adoption of electric vehicles remained the charging time. All EVs are equipped with an onboard converter uh, that transforms the AC power from the grid to DC power that charges the battery. The onboard converters are limited by size and cost allowing a charging speed between 7 and 20 kilowatts, corresponding roughly to 8 to 12 hours to refill completely the battery. This method is ideal to charge during the night at home or during office hours. However, it is very inconvenient for long travels. For this reason, in 2010, a consortium of Japanese companies developed the first fast charging technology, the Shadow that allows to refill a battery in 60 to 90 minutes. This technology uses a DC connection between the uh, EV charger and the car to transfer up to 50 kilowatts of instantaneous power. This new technology made longer travels possible. EV was the first company to introduce Shademo chargers in Europe. In 2013, a new technology emerged, the Combined Charging System, or CCS. The name describes the new connectors that combine the interface uh, for slow AC charging, this part here, with the components uh, that transfer direct current and allow uh, faster charging. Uh, the CCS standard was developed by a consortium of automotive and engineering companies, and EVB played a key role in its development. Today, CCS is the most popular charging technology in the world. 
when it was introduced, the maximum charging power was just 50 kilowatts. But over time, the technology has evolved, and today it's possible to find solutions commercially available up to 350 kilowatts. At this speed, an electric car can fill its battery in about 10 minutes, ideal for a fast stop on the highway. Thank you, Diego. And uh, what is the future for uh, DC technology used uh, for EV charging? The EV charging world is evolving at a very fast pace, and DC technologies are the main enabler for this evolution. Today, we see a growing demand for fast charging points in cities. However, installing a fast charger in urban spaces can be extremely challenging. The two main reasons are the following the limited available space on the roadside and the distance from the closest urban substation that leads to limiting the available power nearby the charger. In order to accommodate the demand for urban fast charging, the latest generation of EV chargers use more compact power uh, electronics, reaching a power density several times higher than the previous generations. These devices can refill a battery in just a few minutes, but need less than a square meter of urban space. Also, EV chargers are becoming integrated with local energy storage system, so they can provide high charging speed also when the available power from the grid is limited by using the energy storage as a buffer. The other major trend is the growing demand for EV chargers with bi-directional capabilities. These devices can return part of the power of the electric vehicle back to the grid. This is particularly interesting for power utilities that can use fleets of electric vehicles to balance the grid, reducing their reliance on uh, conventional power plants. Another important use case for bidirectional chargers is the possibility of using the battery of the electric vehicle to power households. Uh, this is a very useful feature, especially in places with unreliable grid connection or subject to natural disasters, such as Japan with earthquakes or California with fires. The battery of a medium-sized uh, EV can be uh, used to power a house for about five days. Thank you, Diego, for your contribution. Bye. So now let's talk about the VCI architecture. As you can see here, we have a typical single line diagram. Starting from the right, we have the several DC electric vehicles connected to be recharged. Uh, they are represented by their internal battery, which has to be recharged. And we have the uh, relevant fuse in order to protect against the onboard fault. Then we have a DC charger, one for each electric vehicle, in which we have a DC-DC converter in order to adjust the DC voltage and to control the charging phase. In addition, we have the relevant fuse and switch disconnector to protect and switch. Then, according to the nominal power on the plant and to connect all the DC charger in parallel, we can have both the so-called DC combiners and the DC recombiner with the relevant circuit breaker and su disconnector inside. Immediately, at the DC output of the converter, we have a circuit breaker, usually, to protect the DC bus and, according to its internal architecture, to protect the AC-DC converted itself, as we can see later on. Considering the short circuit event, the several fault locations where a short circuit can occur are here represented. Fault A, between the main AC-DC converter and the DC recombiner, the fault B between the DC recombiner and each DC combiners, and fault C between each DC charger and the relevant uh, DC combiners. Uh, each fault has several current contributions, and each circuit breaker 
will detect the total short circuit current which can change according to the fault location. It is important to know the maximum short circuit current in order to choose the circuit breaker with the right braking capacity. Instead, considering the ground fault event, the main locations where a fault can occur is directly on board on the electric vehicle or at the DC charger level through their so-called exposed conductive part. From the current contribution point of view, the two locations are practically equal, so we can just consider the first one. Like in short circuit event, also in this case, we have to know the maximum value of ground fault current in order to, to choose the circuit breaker with the right braking capacity. So, now, uh, talking about ground connection and the protection against electric shock. There is a research group at Politecnico di Milano working on these topics and led by the full professor Enrico Tironi. Let me to introduce now to Simone Negri, who is a researcher working in this research group. Good morning, Simone, and thank you for joining us in this DC Summit. Since you are an expert of direct current and a member of Italian and IC standard committees, we'd like to ask you about the ground connection of both active and exposed conductive parts in an AVCI. In particular, what is under discussion in technical committees? Thank you, Marco, and good morning, everyone. The Italian CEI CT 320 Technical Committee is working on different aspects of DC distribution. In particular, in recent times, uh, we are considering the fault behavior of hybrid AC-DC power systems in presence uh, of ground fault uh, on the DC section. This um, topic, of course, uh, is strongly related uh, to the ground connection of active and exposed conductive parts. At present times, uh, we have just performed a preliminary study on the subject considering different configurations and their pros and cons. We are considering full bridge three-phase IGBT-based power converters, but we know that other IEC committees are considering different options for power converters as well. Thank you, Simone. And uh, what are the differences compared with traditional AC systems? Well, the main difference is due to the presence of static power converters, which mostly dominate the transient of this kind of systems. In fact, in a traditional AC system, the fault current depends on the impedances of the AC systems as seen from the fault, from the fault section, eventually with some kind of time dependence due to transient of rotating machines in the nearby. On the contrary, if we are considering a hybrid AC-DC power systems, the fault current depends not only from the impedances of the AC and of the DC section, but also from the power converters, topology and control. Thank you again, Simone. And uh, what do we have to consider when we'd like to connect our system to ground? Well, the main point we have to consider is the state of the neutral point of our AC systems. With reference uh, in particular to electric vehicles charging infrastructures, it is usual for uh, this level of power to have a dedicated medium voltage, low voltage power transformer, so that theoretically we can have both an isolated or a directly grounded neutral point. However, usually this kind of infrastructure is built upon a two-wire isolated DC section with the AC section with a ground, directly grounded neutral point. We have three main points to consider in this system. Firstly, we can assess that this kind of system can be compared with a traditional TN AC power system, in which the ground fault currents can be pretty large. And for our hybrid AC-DC systems, we can, see, we can say that our fault current can be close in value to the one of the AC system such that uh, it, is, it is necessary to have uh, circuit breakers with high braking capacity and fast intervention time to avoid serious damage to the power converters. Then we have two main points. Firstly, we can say that uh, 
in the AC power section, during the ground fault on the DC section, we can experience DC current component and even high frequency current component. So that our um, the residual current devices must be able to withstand this. In addition, the, even in absence of faults, uh, it is possible to the common volt, due to the common mode voltage generated by power converters to have some kind of high frequency leakage currents such that we have to tune our residual protection devices to avoid unwanted trips in steady state. Thank you, Simone. Last question. What do we have to consider when we'd like to, to design our protection system against electric shock? I see two main points for electrical safety. Firstly, we need the residual current protection devices which are able to withstand DC current components and high frequency current components without unwanted trips. So this is our first point. Secondly, I think that standard committees need to revise the safety criteria for this kind of system considering the effect on the human body of this kind of current in which we have a mix of AC industrial frequency, DC and high frequency components. Well, thank you so much, Simone, for your contribution in this DC Summit. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Marco. Goodbye. So, conventional wisdom is that power electronic converters are always able to limit and interrupt fault current in any situation. So, the fault current is not longer an uh, issue during the design phase. If it might be true, for some specific situation, there are others in which the converter is not able neither to limit nor to interrupt the fault currents. It depends on the converter's architecture and the side, AC or DC side, where the fault occurs. Uh, as we have seen before in the single line diagram, Usually, in an AVCI, we have both a main AC-DC converter and a lot of DC converters. Uh, as you can see here, if the main AC-DC converter is a T-Restore rectifier, usually T-Restore are able to both limit and interrupt the full current by not sending the closing command to their gates. Nevertheless, the restor cannot be used in EVCI with the so-called vehicle-to-grid function because in case of reversal power, we should have to change the DC voltage direction with obviously serious problem with the several devices attached. Otherwise, if you'd like to use also the vehicle-to-grid function, Usually, a main ACDC converter is made by the so-called IGBT-based converter. But also in this case, if you have a fault on DC side, the IGBTs are not able nor to limit and interrupt the short circuit current, even if we send the blocking signal to the IGBT by the control system, since the current will flow through the so-called freewheeling diodes. Talking about the DC-DC converter, if the DC-DC converter is a so-called book converter, in this case, as you can see, the output voltage, I mean the voltage on the load side, in this case the battery side, is lower than the input voltage, the voltage on the uh, DC bus side. As you can see, if we have a short circuit in one of the locations that we have described before, the battery contribution to the fault will pass through the uh, freewheeling diodes called D2 without any possibility for the GBT to interrupt this current even if we try to send the blocking signal by the uh, control system. This type of converter cannot be used in an AVCI with the so-called vehicle-to-grid function. 
In this case, with this function, we have to use the so-called bidirectional DCDC converter. But also in this case, the IGBTs and the converter itself is not able, no, never to limit nor to interrupt the short circuit current because the battery contribution still passes through the freewheeling diode D1. So let me to introduce you to our colleague Pietro Cairoli, who is the Power Electronic Department Manager at the ABB Research Center in the US. Good morning, Pietro. Can you kindly explain us what are the several fault contributions when we have a fault, short circuit and ground fault in an AVCI? Thank you, Marco, and hi, everyone. So when you're looking at a DC distribution system, you have different type of fault scenarios. You have short circuit fault scenarios and ground fault, uh, fault scenarios. Let's start from the short circuits. So in short circuit faults, you expect to have contributions from multiple elements in the system. First, from the main source or the grid through the rectifier. Second, from batteries and battery energy storage connected to the system. And third, the aggregated contributions from all the different EV chargers that are connected to the main distribution bus. We also expect multiple scenarios, so faults close to the main uh, source, faults on the main distribution bus, and fault close to the EV chargers. In all cases, we expect to see very high short circuit currents and especially very fast fault dynamics. When we're looking at ground faults, the situation is a little bit different. On the one hand, we can see that the contributions from batteries and EV chargers uh, can be limited uh, in terms of ground fault current because it can be limited by the power converters. On the other hand, the contribution from the main grid or the main source going through the rectifier will still be there and will need to be addressed by the protections. Overall, we expect very high fault currents and very fast dynamics, and we need to keep this in mind when we think of protections. Okay, thank you, Pietro. And uh, can you kindly explain us how we can protect against uh, this fault uh, and which kind of uh, circuit breaker uh, we have to use? Yes, we can look at multiple options when you are trying to solve uh, protections in these type of systems. The first option is the classical option. In this case, we have electromechanical breakers upstream and electromechanical breakers downstream. In this case, we're relying on energetic coordination to protect and coordinate protections in the system. Unfortunately, this method falls short uh, because it will not be able to protect uh, the fault current coming from the main source and through the rectifier. Occasionally, it could also cause problem in protecting other power converters. The second option is a hybrid option. In this case, we have sol a solid state breaker as a main breaker and electromechanical breaker downstream. In this case, we are able actually to protect uh, the main rectifier, but we're not, uh, there could be some open points when it comes to coordination between the solid state breaker and the electromechanical breakers. The third option is a pure solid state option. In this case, we have solid state breakers upstream and solid state breakers downstream. And in this case, we can provide protection to the system, protection to the power converters, and coordination across the whole system. Okay, thank you, Pietro, for your contribution. Bye. Now, let's show you the ABB comprehensive offer to meet the several EVCI protection requirements.